K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello, gamers, simmers, and pilots. Welcome back to the World Tour featuring, I almost said Microsoft, Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. <clears throat> and we're all set to go. I've got peanuts, which is the appropriate thing to have on a flight. And an Italian soda. with grape, uh, green apple, and almond. Um, I used to get those as rock stars, but the rock stars are beginning to be a bit of a problem uh, because of all the caffeine. And at my age, uh, which I'm not quite 50, but I'll be pushing 49 this year, probably not a good idea for me to be drinking uh, rock stars. So, <clears throat> doing away with the rock stars and we'll have the italian soda with the flavors instead but let's go ahead <clears throat> and talk about our flight that was my phone Alrighty, so here we are this is scenery disc number nine this is the map for it and we are sitting here at grand grand rapids <clears throat> michigan at kent county international uh, which is now called um, Gerald R. Ford, I believe now. <coughs> but back in the 80s, it was called <coughs> Kent County International. So, where are we going? We're going to be flying south, almost due south, as a matter of fact. Actually, yeah, we are flying due south. Look at this. This is where we're going. Kalamazoo. And if you take a look at... Okay, nope, sorry, not due south, just slightly southwest. But yeah, that is where we're going to be heading. And I believe the Kalamazoo, I think this is like sitting right on the center of the Kalamazoo um, um, Vor. <laughs> so if we tune into the Vor and then uh, tune in... Um, I don't know, like a runway direction, we should be able to land pretty decently. Now, what I'd like to do is maybe uh, look up some real weather data. How about we do that? Let's take a look at the... Let's add some weather uh, to, to the flight. <clears throat> so we're looking here at the National Weather Service. This is weather.gov. Um, do not go to the Weather Channel or <laughs> any of those other stuff because they get their information from here anyway. And you don't have to worry about all those scam ads and whatever else that Weather Channel decides to put up. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and let's look up um, Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, Michigan here. Okay, so... Uh, let's see, it's 40 degrees there. We got a few clouds. <clears throat> and actually, you know what? KGRR, that's where that's coming from. Um, maybe the thing to look up for is meter weather instead of uh, that. So let's look up the meter weather for uh, a moment. Here we go. This is a better web website to go to. Aviation Weather uh, Center, which is aviationweather.gov meter. And here is the meter stuff here. So let's go ahead and look up KGRR <coughs> for Grand Rapids. And here we go. We got ourselves uh, the time, <coughs> ground speed is uh, 
250 at 15 knots. Visibility, few clouds at uh, flight level 250. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll throw the winds in there. This may not be a very fun flight, but we're going to go ahead and put that in there. <coughs> and add a little bit of uh, variety. <coughs> So we're not going to worry about putting clouds in this because, well, you either have overcast uh, or you don't. So, okay. Uh, now, when we hit uh, E, it's actually going to move us. Just so you're aware, we won't be right here. It'll move us maybe a little bit off to the side. So let's go ahead and go into <coughs> the settings. Okay, so bottoms of oh, that's right. <laughs> Not that. That's going to make. That's going to give us an overcast. We don't want that. All right, service level. We said was two hundred and fifty. That's sorry. That's knots. Boy, that would be bad. <laughs> we would just get blown off the. <laughs> we would get blown off the air. Uh, the uh, airfield or whatever. Okay, so like I said, it was it's going to move us, but we're still at Grand Rapids, see? So <laughs> we're kind of at the center of uh, the Grand Rapids airport, but that's okay. There's a building oh, right in front of us. Do you see that? What is that? Well, maybe it's good that we did come over here. We got we to gotta check this out before we take off. You know that, right? Okay. Oh, and I never used the ATIS the last time. Well, now we have every reason in the world to uh, uh, to use it because the weather is going to be different uh, than it was before. Well, we used the ILS, which is what we wanted to use. So, but let's go ahead and tune in the comm radio. One one eight point eight five. Oh, that's it right there. Grand Rapids, Kent County International, information Bravo, weather visibility 10, temperature 60, wind 249 at 15, altimeter 29.95, landing departing runway 26, advise control on initial contact, you have Bravo. All right, so we want runway 26. Hmm. Where is 26? I'm going to assume it's this runway right here. That looks about right. Okay, so we'll come up here. We'll take a look at this building and see what in the world that is. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll also pull up the airport on Google Maps and see if it's a building of some significance. Uh, and then we'll taxi our way um, over here to runway 26 and take off. But something is up there. Maybe it's just another fuel box. I don't know. But it's up here. Let's let's take a look and see what it is. All right. So we're going to do our magnetos. That's tab M5 on an emulator. We'll get our uh, VORs tuned in also. Uh, let me just check Kalamazoo here real quick. Whoops. Kalamazoo, 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 where are you, Kalamazoo? All right, there you are. Okay, so they don't have any ATIS or anything, but they do have a fuel box. So that's always nice. <clears throat> Probably should land on runway 27 would be my guess. So here's what we can do. Uh, let me go ahead and pull that map up again so you guys can see. So I'm thinking uh, we can use the VOR for Kent, sorry, uh, Grand Rapids, and practically take a one, 180 route, or maybe 170, I don't know. Uh, 180 is probably fine. Um, 
and we can tune in the Kalamazoo at uh, I think I believe it's a 270 uh, runway I'll double check as we're flying and see um, but I think that's what we should do and it will link up somewhere around there between those two uh, vores wait a minute that's yeah that is Kalamazoo <laughs> getting a little confused here because WK Kellogg is right above the airport but no this this is WK Kellogg this one's Kalamazoo so yeah so we should intersect with those two vores right about there so those are the ones that we're going uh, to tune in All right, so we only have DME on nav number one. So that's the one that's going to be uh, Kalamazoo. So tab in, we'll change that to 109.4. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, it's not gonna give us, give us distance. We don't get DME on, on, uh, oh, sorry, that's Battle Creek. Try 109.0, that might work. Thirty-eight miles. Okay, well, that doesn't seem as, I was expecting it to be farther than that. go ahead and turn this to 270 and then nav 2 which is control into or tab into if you're using an emulator is Grand Rapids 110.2 go ahead and Change that right there, and we said that we're gonna take a 180 vector. Yeah, that's right. And there we go. Our nav radios are set. So let's go ahead and get rolling here I think that is another fuel box so some of these airports have two fuel boxes We got lines for taxiways on this one and you know what that is what is a little bit different I've noticed between uh, the scenery discs uh, for the Commodore 64 and the scenery discs also by Sublogic for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the Microsoft Flight Simulator actually has the taxiways drawn out Unfortunately, um, I was only able to go so far with the Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator 2 um, because when using disk images for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2, or we'll just call it MSFS2. break here. What, what do we got going on here? Okay. Well, that's the runway. 
Oh, we could take that runway right there, as a matter of fact. That might be runway 26, as a matter of fact. Oops. Had my... It is a fuel box. Look at that. So there are two fuel boxes at this airport. Isn't that interesting? Well, we don't have to drive over there, then, because we can see it right here on the map. Drive. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to drive over there in our plane. Oh, you know how it is. <clears throat> but yeah, um, when you make disk images of the uh, PC versions of the simulator, uh, scenery disk, there is a right protected sector, sector that has to be bypassed, and that happens to have scenery on it also. And so when that's done... Um, there are chunks of scenery missing. Um, and so I was not able, I was only able to follow the world tour to a certain point. Oh, I think this is 26. Yeah. Check that out. We're at the right runway. Yay. And I use, what do I use? I do use DOSBox with Flight Simulator 2, but I use a front end uh, for a defend because you have to have a way to be able to switch disks in order to load up that scenery disk. Um, or do I? No, I think I do. I need, I've got the Teledesk versions, and those are unaltered. So if there's a way to use a Teledesk image with DOSBox, then I will be able to do the complete version of the tour on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. So if any of you know and can point me in the right direction as far as being able to use the Teledesk images then I will be able to uh, fill in those gaps with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2, which I really want to do. Um, I, I want to have a complete version of that flight uh, for you guys because I'm I, and I, I'm pretty sure you guys want to see it. Um, and unlike the Commodore 64 version, the PC version of Flight Simulator 2 has scenery disk number 12. Um, where this, uh, they didn't do it on, on it, so. Alright, we're ready for takeoff. Let's head on up. Bring down one of our flaps here. Let's try to stay on the runway here. We're on the air! Yay! You always gotta look out the rear so that way you can see the runway as you fly away. Whoa, look at that. The wind is making a difference because we were on the runway. Look how much we got, got blown off there. There's that fuel box right over there. So, everyone, say goodbye to Grand Rapids, Michigan as the world tour continues. We're now going to intersect with the Grand Rapids VOR. Yeah, we're flying over the airport. Because <laughs> that's what you do, you know, you, you, you make a turn while you're flying right over the airport. I'm sure Control Tower really appreciates it.
Now off in the direction where that white line, which is a road, uh, goes, uh, I believe will connect up with scenery disc number 11. And we will be getting to scenery disc 11 uh, within the next uh, several flights. So we're almost done with scenery disc number 9. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I thought something was funky going on with the altimeter. I had to do uh, the adjustment uh, for the altimeter and it reset. So we're getting... It was trying to say I was only 1,500 uh, feet up and I knew that wasn't right. Yeah, we can go ahead and start leveling off here and I think we can start turning towards 180 because you can see look at OBS number two there it's it was beginning to move oh, we got one thing of flaps down let's go ahead and re uh, retract that whoops from it now. Try listening to this sound through headphones. Holy smokes. After a bit, your head will be like... This is authentic sounds coming from a Piper. <laughs> Piper Archer. Gotta love it how we're just kind of laid back here on uh, Killer TV. Just kind of, we chill, you know, we chill here on this channel. Um, and also, uh, Twitch. Twitch is a thing. Uh, so currently I'm live streaming this. Uh, which is going to be, by the time uh, you guys on YouTube see this, it'll have been, oh, I don't know, maybe three or four months uh, uh, prior that I had streamed it. But, um, yeah, so what I'm doing now is, instead of recording all the footage for the episodes offline like I was... Uh, now, what I'm doing is I'm live streaming while I'm uh, recording. And what that does is that gives you all a chance to join me on the live stream and be a part of the show. I don't know how many channels do that. You can forget about those corporate channels doing something like that.
Yeah, so if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, definitely subscribe. Uh, you're going to want to help support independent uh, channels and video makers like myself uh, because YouTube uh, was meant for us, for me and you and you know, so that way we can get our voice um, out there, um, you know, us, the independents, instead of the corporations with all their political uh, identity politics and all that other garbage. Um, so, yeah, so if you're supporting me, you're supporting yourself. I mean, you're not going to see any corporate channels do stuff like this. And quite frankly, you know, there's quite a few channels that, that I watch on a regular basis um, on YouTube um, that I really enjoy that are not uh, the of the corporate mindset. Some are a little bit more produced and advanced than others, um, but I, I still... Uh, subscribe and am, am a part of them uh, as far as watching them because I would rather watch that than watch <laughs> the stuff that that's out on TV and and stuff like some of the recent shows that I've been watching uh, which have been which would have been done by now is the Star Trek Picard series and I'm having a hard time trying to like that show. I mean, it just isn't. It's not the Star Trek that I that I grew up with. I mean, it used to be a very fun, family-friendly show that you'd be able to go to and sit back and relax and you know and and rewatch again. I wouldn't want to rewatch Star Trek Picard. I'm having a hard time trying to get through the rest of the season as it is. It's just um, more violence and F-bombs and language in there. I'm like, what the heck is this? This is not Star Trek. Um, uh, Star Trek Discovery, I was having a problem with. Season 3 should be out by the time you're, you're seeing this. Um, I did like Season 2. And that was mainly because of Captain Pike. I was oh, I was really excited that they that they got that they did something with Captain Pike and the and the actor um, that they got was incredible. Um, he really brought out that persona of Captain Pike, so that was neat. Uh, I could care less about the whole Red Angel thing. <laughs> Uh, and Doctor Who. Doctor Who is another show that I really love. I mean, I'm a Doctor Who fan. And the the female Doctor, the 13th Doctor, I liked her first year. Um, it was different. And I enjoyed that. The second year, the one that's been airing this year... I've only seen, like, the first part as of recording. Uh, recording uh, this video and I did not like it. And it's just hard to find uh, good shows to watch anymore, it seems. Uh, the Orville, though, is great. <laughs> I love the Orville. That's the Star Trek that I've that I've been wanting to see. Of course, it's got Seth MacFarlane humor kind of spread out through there, but that's what helps make it a little bit more unique, but it still has a Star Trek feel to it as far as the stories are concerned. And it's fun to watch, and I'm actually thinking about watching it again um, just to fulfill that Trek need. <laughs> He just he does a good job. Seth MacFarlane does a good job.
<clears throat> Let's take a look out the rear of the plane. Okay, so that is Grand Rapids back there. And that is all green grass and trees <laughs> that we're seeing in front of us. But oh, we get some we got some loading going on here. For a moment, I thought it froze. It's, that would not be fun if that's what it did. Let's take a look out the... Okay, we don't have anything. Uh, but I mentioned before how the old flight simulator is mostly IFR flying. I mean, you have to depend upon your instruments. I mean, take a look out the screen there. Um, can you tell how high we are just by looking at that? No. So you got to use your instruments. So if you really want a challenge, play, play the old simulators like this one. We know that we're 23 miles away from Kalamazoo. We're on the heading that we want to be on. We're very close to it. So we looked at the map. We got all we got we got ourselves prepared. And we just have to have faith in our instruments. Even though this says off, it is tuned in because we can see that here. We're just at an angle um, that isn't covered there. Um, I did say that I was going to pull up the airport information. Uh, let's see. Kalamazoo is K-A-Z-O. And see what runways they have. Okay, so they do have a runway 27. Perfect. They also have a runway 23, but I'm thinking 27 is going to be the best one since uh, Grand Rapids had, had us take off from runway 26 because of the wind. Oh, and the wind. D didn't we set 270 for the degrees on the wind? So that might actually work. Actually, I think we're supposed to be flying against the wind. Um... Uh, but I don't think that works too well in Flight Simulator. So, I don't know. Uh, we will see. We'll put that theory to the test. Does it work well with Flight Simulator 2 to fly with the wind or against the wind? Every time I say against the wind, I think of that song. Against the wind. We'll be running against the wind. Bob Seeger and the Silver Bullet Band. Yeah, let me pull up the lyrics here. Against the wind. We were running against the wind. We were young and strong, but just running against the wind. I can sing better when I have music. <laughs> Maybe I can find a MIDI tune. Bit MIDI. There we go. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me get the lyrics. <laughs> I 
<laughs> so you know where I'm coming from. Hey, what do we got here? I think that's Kalamazoo. I can't wait to upload this video and see if YouTube tries to copy, copyright claim it because of a MIDI tune. Because now they're copyright claiming videos for melodies. Like, really? From what I remember reading, if you change like a certain certain percentage of a song, then it can't be. Then it's okay, you know. You can't really copyright claim it or something. And considering that I'm using a a, a MIDI file, so it's not the same instruments, and then I'm singing to it, that's more than like fifty percent, <laughs> or at least somewhere close to it. I don't know. You gotta do something on these long... Uh, well, this is not a too long of a flight, but... You gotta have a little bit of an entertainment. If they don't copyright claim it, then uh, maybe we can uh, take a look at some other MIDI tunes or something that we can just kind of throw into the background. Uh, you know, just really, really softly give us give us something uh, else to listen to besides the helicopter sound coming from the Piper Archer that we have. So, 14 miles away from Kalamazoo. And that road that we're seeing up there, let me take a look at a map. Map, 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 map. Okay, I believe that is Interstate 94. Let's go ahead and pull that up here so you can see that on a real map. So here it is, Kalamazoo, right here in the uh, center of the screen. Interstate 94 is just south of that. And that is what we're seeing right there. Realistic scenery we got here, folks. <laughs> This is this is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, in progress. <laughs> you know how they have an alpha release and a beta release. Uh, this is like the Charlie release, or maybe it's the Zulu release. This this is the uh, wireframe, uh, somewhat shaded. Uh, version of Flight Simulator 2020 that they use as a base. <laughs> I'm totally making that up. <laughs> okay, 12 miles to go to Kalamazoo. Uh, what is the altitude for Kalamazoo? Let me uh, take a look. As you know, we can't judge height with this uh, type of scenery, so going to need to rely on our instruments, and it would help if we know what the altitude is at Kalamazoo. And it's 872 feet, so we need to keep that in mind when we're landing. Uh, we'll be, we'll somewhat be able to tell. Ah, no, it went off. It went on for a moment. We'll be able to somewhat tell as we're coming in, but it also helps here, too, to know um, how high up we are. 
We don't have an ILS that's going to be able to guide us. So we'll need to be smart with our instruments. Ten miles? Now, do you remember on the map that we saw the Interstate 94 just south of Kalamazoo? You can see that. You can see how it's just south of it. And if we take a look at the overhead map, zoom out here, uh, we may not be close enough. There we go. There we go. See? You can see it. And it has this little curve thing going on here. Uh, if we pull that map back up, and uh, let's go to satellite view, and we'll change this to uh, where it's south. There it is. Do you see that little curve there? See how it kind of goes up here and down and up and around? Take a look. See that? So it's kind of neat uh, when looking at this old scenery to be able to see how close uh, does it come, you know, when, when, when it comes to uh, representing the actual scenery. And they do a pretty decent job with, with what they have. I'm assuming that this is the airport right here, this little white little splotch. We should not have a glide slope. 109.0 is not a ILS. Uh, or, oh, okay. No, that's where it normally sits. Sorry. It usually sits up there. take a look at our windows and make sure there's not something else kind of hiding. Now that looks like it. This definitely looks like it. That is moving. That is moving. Maybe it really is an ILS. Runway 9, runway 27. No. The real, the real airport does not have an ILS on runway 27. It's runway 35. This is definitely interesting. What is it picking up? Maybe it's not supposed to pick it up. I don't know. All right, five miles away. Let's start dropping some flaps. We're good. we're coming in a little too quick.
Whoa, 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 what the heck? Whoa, hold on, folks. There's something wrong with my keyboard. There it goes. I do not know what happened. It just got stuck for a moment. That was weird. Okay. If you didn't see it, rewind the video a little bit. You'll see that this throttle just shot all the way up. And I was trying to move it back down, and it kind of inched down and then went back up again. That was weird. I think I need another keyboard, because what I have is a wireless keyboard. This thing is old. Okay, I think that runway 23 is like right here, and I think we're coming up to runway 27 right there. going to drop another degree of flaps here. And let's use our rudder to start making some fine turns here. Some fine tuning on We'll try to come at uh, 270 degrees at an angle. We're roughly 2,000 feet above ground level. We're going to need to turn ourselves a little bit more, I think. Zoom in here. There she is. Yes, yeah, so we probably could have landed on runway 23. Might have been okay, but I just got a feeling we would have uh, had a hard time landing on the runway. But yeah, we'll come in here at an angle and then just kind of slowly turn. Just try to make this nice little turn. Uh, as much as we can and land on runway 27 much higher in altitude than we want to be, so... If you look closely, you'd be able to see a little bit of brown in there. Um, which is part of the runway. So the white is the outline of the runway. Do you see it? You can see the runway here, 23, and right here is 27. And this is a short runway too, so let's go in at, oh, I want to try to go in as slow as we can, but I don't want to stall either. And you know, you know what happens when we stall, I mean this thing nose dives. Whereas normally when you fly, you want to stall like above the runway so that way you come down. 
um, that don't work so well <laughs> in this old simulator because uh, from what it understands when you stall it's like oh okay well nose down and yeah that just doesn't seem to work out very well but we're we're beginning to line up Coming through here. Let's control our power a little bit. Control our rate of descent. I always get a little bit excited when I am able to actually line up with these old simulators because it's just not easy to see it from a from a distance. Remember, we got that wind that is blowing too, so this is going to be relatively interesting. try to land this on the runway if possible. Alright, come on. Do me right here. Do me right. Do me right. Don't stall. Don't sink. No, 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 no. We did it! We didn't crash! And it was on the runway. Whoa! Throttle down. Brake. Woo! We managed to... <laughs> it stalled, but it didn't nose down. We were able to control um, the plane. Thank goodness. All right. There's supposed to be a fuel box here. I'll be dang if I see one. <laughs> I sure don't see a fuel box. But this little corner right here looks like a good place to park, so we'll just park right there. Not like there's any air traffic or anything, but, you know. turned here. All right! Yay! We'll shut off the engines there. Awesome! We're here, folks. We are here at Kalamazoo, Michigan. So the tour continues. We will go ahead and continue to our next location on the next episode. So I appreciate everyone who is uh, watching and has been following this whole time. If you've watched only some of the episodes, be sure to go back uh, to where we all started from Meg's and uh, check out and enjoy this nice retro flight that we have going on. And um, hey, if you're new here, subscribe. So that way you get to uh, you know ring that notification bell so that way you know when new videos come up. And Twitch, remember that's a thing. Um, I'm doing recording these videos and live streaming at the same time. So if you come over to twitch.tv slash killer gamer, K I L R gamer, right? Uh, <laughs> you may just be a part of the episode. You get to interact with me as we're flying. And that's a cool thing. So follow me over on Twitch. And, uh, I'm on social media, Twitter and Instagram. 
Um, I'm trying to do posts on a regular basis. Instagram, I try to put some uh, kind of fun, uh, maybe some uh, kind of like personal uh, pictures up there, of like what I might be working on or whatever. And and Twitter, I haven't quite, quite figured out what I want to do with Twitter, um, other than maybe posting an announcement that you know I got a new video up or something. But but hey, maybe you, the listener, the listeners. I'm still thinking like I'm on a radio station or something, uh, which I had a radio station. It was Killer Radio. Uh, you, the viewers, let me know what you would like to see. You know, what kinds of stuff would you like to see on Twitter? What kinds of stuff would you like to see on Instagram? Uh, do you care about Snapchat or not? Um, and if so, what would you like to see? Let me know so that way I can do more stuff uh, for you guys. But yeah uh that's it i appreciate you watching and i'll see you on the next leg of our journey mm -hmm.